My bad, little flock of ladies. We got cut off on the last video, but we're going to continue where we left off and finish the uh, message and the meal. All right. I told you it was so much. I had to break it up in parts. Y'all see. All right. So but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, I am free, like I was saying, and continueth therein. He continues in that state of being. He does not care what happens. See? He continues and endures in that state of mind, even though this outside is trying to convince him that he should come out of there, out of that enclosed state that he's in. See? You see? Okay. But he continues therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, so he didn't just hear it and forgot it, but a doer of the work. See how it says work, little flock. This is the work necessary. It's the internal labor. Everybody else is telling you about what you do outside of your body that other people can see. What they can't see is where the power is, which is within you, which is what Yahusha said. So I'm directing you back within yourself and saying what you need to do to be saved is to go into his rest that he's provided for you. And where is that rest? It is in the name of I am. I am free. And if you remain in that state and continue therein and do that work, which is to remain planted, that's the work. I am safe. I am blessed. Doesn't care what it looked like. I'm not a judger with my eyes. Y'all didn't read the Bible or something? I judge righteous judgment. Watch this here. But a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his what? What he does, his doing, his deed. He will be blessed in what he did on the inside, the work that was necessary. He said he was doing work. That's the work I keep telling you guys about. It ain't about nothing else. Nothing else saves you. Yahushua showed y'all that on the boat. Nothing else saved them. What did save them? What is Was it him being in a peaceful, calm state of being? Is that what saved the men on the boat? You guys have to say yes to me. So then what will save you on, on that boat you're on? Nothing different. The same thing will. See it? That's what I'm telling you all, little flock of laters. That's what that dream is telling us all. Continuing. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. What does that mean? People think they know what that means. I'm going to tell you what it actually really means. It means when a man says something like, I am free, but yet when trouble comes that says he's not, he changes from I am free to I am whatever the situation has changed to. That's vanity. So then he won't get what he said he wanted, which was to be free. He won't get it because he doesn't believe he is. And as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So when people talk about bridling the tongue, what tongue do you think needs to be bridled? I've already told you in this message through the dream. It is to be enclosed and slow to speak because you're in a restful state peaceful rest in peace as state of being aren't you yeah you are right then all right then and so they say well bridling your tongue means not speaking cuss words not 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 talking all loud and harsh and everything and mean to people and 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 Nope, it ain't got nothing to do with that. I told you what it is. Your religion is vain. If you claim something of the Father and don't follow through with it and don't continue in it, then you're, you're vain and you won't get a result. It was prof unprofitable, which that's what vain means. So if you're on the boat and you're going, you, you're on the boat and everything's looking fine and you go, I'm fine. I'm blessed today. And then storm come rolling through and throws the boat around and you start saying, I'm unsafe. I'm afraid. Then you didn't bridle your tongue, dumbass. Don't you see it? So your religion is vain. What you say you believe, I am free, is not really what you believe. You believe the outside world. Ho ass nigga. See? I'm not playing with you niggas. I'm here to tell you the truth and pull the wool off of all of them fake ass wolves running down them fucking hills trying to blend in. You ain't blending in here, nigga. I want to know who tells you all these things when it, according to these breakdowns, like bridling his tongue. Who said that about bridling a tongue, what the grandson told you today? That you can't deny that's what it means. Well, then how come ain't nobody else telling you that's what it means? Because they don't know, obviously. That means they don't have the spirit, obviously. Oh, 
Who interprets a dream? Who is the interpreter of a dream? Hmm. All right then. Pure religion undefiled before El and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless widows in their affliction and to keep himself as unspotted from the world. So the only thing that you physically do that is a sign of the fact that you are now one with the Father is what you do by visiting people who are less fortunate or who are in a strait or who are having problems because you are free to do that now. That's why that's what it means to be free. You are free from your own life. You are free from your own thoughts concerning your life, like Yahushua set you free from. So now you are psychologically at rest. You are no longer psychologically bogged down with stressful thoughts because he said he came to give you rest for your souls. And that said, it will save your soul if you learn to just simply rest and assume that the things you need are taken care of. That allows you to now be free to go forth and to care about the widows and the fatherless. The same ones Abba said you guys were leaving desolate because you were too concerned with how you looked, what you ate, how you dressed, what you wore, what you drove, where you lived, where your kids went to school and all that other vain, dumb bullshit that doesn't matter. Continuing. All right, now, Ecclesiastes. Let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Verse 1, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be poor, born, <laughs> time to be born, good Lord, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow. So let's slow down real quick. We were talking about being slow to what, little flock of laters? Speak. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. I am telling you all about the time when to keep silence, aren't I? When trouble hit, that's when it's time to keep silent. And there is, according to this scripture, a time to do such a thing. The trouble is coming to crush men's pride. When it comes, you must remain humble and submit it to the word of his patience in order to be saved. Otherwise, you won't be. That's simple. You won't. There's only one way. And Yahushua showed you the way when he stood there quietly, even though they beat him, they spat upon him. See the spit upon you? That makes you want to what? Unbridle your tongue, doesn't it, guys? This is not hard to understand. Doesn't this make you want to unbridle your tongue and start to confess that you are now in that perilous situation you're in? I'm being beaten. I'm in sorrow and sad. I'm cast away and cut off. I'm this and I'm that and I'm this. And the worst that he said was, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? My power, my power, why hast thou left me? That's the worst that he said. And you guys are sitting up here saying, well, what should I do when the trouble come upon me? Keep the word of his patience just like he did. Be slow to speak. If you're not slow to speak, what would be the other way to speak? What's the opposite of slow to speak? We'll use a word and let's see if it fits. If it does, you guys know I ain't playing. Hasty. So the opposite of slow to be speak would be haste. Moving in haste, correct? Keep that in mind as we continue studying the word here, little flock, and unveiling this dream that the brother had. So we see that a time to speak and a time to keep silence. Y'all heard that? Right then. Now we want to go to Isaiah. Isaiah 28. Right, little flock of ladies? Isaiah 28. We're going to start at verse 1. Now, what did we read about in Psalm 80? Hey, shepherd, the shepherd that leads Joseph. You see that there, little flock of ladies? The shepherd that leads Joseph. 
Now we're going to read here in Isaiah 28. Let's see what comes up. Woe to the crown of pride. Oh my goodness. What did the grandson say? Abba's going to deal with pride. Will he start at the crown of pride? You know good and damn well he is. Judgment must first begin at the house of God. Is Ephraim or Joseph a part of the house of God? So whose pride will be dealt with first? Israel's pride will. And they will be shaken and there won't be very many branches left and it will be debris everywhere as we saw through the brother's dream. And so the new branches that are going to replace those who have been broken off are going to come in and they need to be told how to remain. That's what I'm doing for the branches because I am the branch who remains at the root, unbreakable. That's why I'm talking the way I'm talking about Yahusha. That's why I'm telling y'all stuff and holding y'all to the fire saying, is it true? And if it is true, then how come these other people are not telling it to you? Is it true and good? If it's true and good, what I'm telling you, that means they're withholding good from you if they're not telling it to you, correct? Look at all the good they've been withholding from you while sounding good when they talk. But I don't sound good when I talk, so people think I'm, with, I'm not withholding anything good. Excuse me. They think I'm withholding the good. When in actuality, I'm giving them all the good, but they don't know how to judge right. They judge wrong. See, they judge with their eyes and their ears. What it look like and what it sound like. That's how they judge. And that causes you to be prideful. So let's continue. Woe to the crown of pride. Who? To the drunkards of Ephraim. See that their little flock of later? Drunkards. What are they drunk on? Pride. Whose glorious beauty is a what? fading flower. What did I tell you guys? Man is like a flower. He grows up, he blooms into a beautiful flower, and then he withers and fades away. But while he's all beautiful and glowing, he becomes prideful, thinking that that's who he is forever. Even though he's going to fade, it's not going to be that way, but for a moment. It's just temporal. And what's temporal is what you can see. And what's not seen is eternal. So what should I focus on about my being? The internal, which you can't see, which is eternal, or the, in, the external, which is temporary? and changes and fades like a flower. Well, these guys are fading like a flower. So that means that they were stuck on outward appearance, how things look, how things sound. Correct? Yeah. Which are on the head of the fat valleys of them that are overcome with wine, exclamation point, pride. Behold, I am hath a mighty and a strong one. Listen, which as a tempest, Tempest means storm. What did I tell you he's going to do? He's going to bring a storm to break the pride. Isn't that what he's saying here? Right then. Which is a tempest of what? Hell and a destroying what? Storm. As a flood of mighty waters overflowing. As a flood. What did he say the wolves were like? They were like a flood overflowing. Isn't that what he said? All right, then. Overflowing shall cast down to the earth with the hand. They're going to cast down. Told you. The pride. The crown of pride. The drunkards of Ephraim shall be trodden underfoot. The debris that he was trotting on his feet. You see it there. It's going to be torn down, like uh, Abba said. And the glorious beauty which is on the head of the fat valley shall be a fading flower. And as the hasty fruit before the summer, which when he that looketh upon it seeth while it is yet in his hand, he eateth it up. In that day shall I am of armies be for a crown of glory. See the, the seal upon your forehead, a crown. What is it? I am is in that day. That's going to be the crown of glory, not pride. Pride will be cast out. That red dragon shall be cast out. You see, red is the bottomless pit of the body. What the hell is it doing being in the head of the body? Because the body's been flipped in reverse. Like I've told you all along and I've showed you with those seven eyes that Abba gave me to tell you guys. Correct? All right, then. Continuing. 
In that day shall I am of armies be for a crown of glory and for a diadem of beauty unto the residue of his people, the people that remain. See, it's going to be their crown that they wear. I am is going to be. That's the seal that Revelation told you they have in their foreheads, the name of the living God. It's I am. See it? And for a spirit of judgment to him that sitteth in judgment and for strength to them that turn the battle to the gate. And they, but they also have air through wine. You see it? And through strong drink are out of the way. The priest, like I told you, and the prophet have erred through strong drink. They are swallow up of wine, pride, see? And they are out of the way through strong drink. They err in vision. They stumble in judgment because they're prideful. Pride blinds you. It makes you where you can't see anything. You start to judge wrongfully. Like he said here, they stumble in judgment. You see? Because they're drunk with strong drink and wine. What happens when you get drunk? You do not bridle your tongue and you start to speak prideful, arrogant things to people. Is it true or is it not true? All right, then. That's what happens when you drink pride. See? It? For all tables are full of vomit and filthiness. So when they teach people and they serve the, the food on the table, it ain't nothing on there but trash. See, it ain't like it is here at School of Marvel's Light where you got all kind of wonderful things to eat. They ain't serving you up shit. That's why I be asking you. What they serving you over there? Who is these great teachers you guys listen to? Put it in the comment section and show it to me so I can see. Who are these great teachers giving you these great nuggets of wisdom and all these secret downloads and hidden things of God? Who are they and where are they? Hmm. <clears throat> hmm. Maybe they drunk. Maybe these niggas are staggering around on wine and on pride thinking they know some shit they don't fucking know. All they talk about is outward appearance. That fucks their judgment up, doesn't it? Yeah, it do. But that's all they talk about. Full of vomit and filthiness. So, there, so that there is no place clean. Look at that. Whom shall he teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. To whom he said, this is the rest. Listen, this is the rest. Wherewith you may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. What is the rest and the refreshing? I just told you what it is. It's his name. That is what refreshes your life. I am. You didn't know that before, so you were dead. But you will be quickened once you now understand the Father's name. And now you will not take it in vain any longer. You will rest in the truth of his name, not you. You have now understood that you aren't I am. You are not the almighty power, but I am is the power above all powers. It is the father who said that was his name. So you took it in vain. You didn't know it. You were walking around thinking it was you in your idolatry. You didn't know. You did it ignorantly. You see? But now he would have all men come to the knowledge of this truth as it is this day. You see it? All right. This is the refreshing, but what do the people do? Yet they would not hear it. They wouldn't hear it. But the word of I am was unto them precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. That, why? Why was it like that? What does that mean? That means the guy sitting there, like I told you how the Pharisees do. Right here, then right there, then right there, then right there. They give you 15 scriptures. When you ask them one question, they give you 15 to 20 scriptures to answer the question. And it's nothing but a copy and paste. They just show you, they just put the same shit. This scripture, this scripture, 20 scriptures about one damn thing. You like, yeah, I know that's precept upon precept, line upon line and every goddamn thing like that. But that's, we get weaned off of that. We get weaned off of that. That's who's ready to hear the actual truth. But those who are not winged, hmm, they go by precept upon precept, line upon line. And what happens to them? That they might go and fall backward. Look at this. And be broken and snared, trapped and taken. 
So as it was in the days of the Son of Man, so shall, I mean, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. They were eating and drinking and partying and blah, 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 blah. And then when the flood came, they were taken away. When the flood came, the flood, which is what I'm warning all you guys about because I'm the Noah of the end days. I'm warning you a flood is coming. A flood of enemies is coming in. I'm warning you. You see it? And now my brother has confirmed it by seeing the dream that he has seen. And I'm interpreting the dream to further prove to you that the spirit is the one saying this to you. You understand it? Flood's coming. And there's only one way to be saved in it. That's what Noah came to tell you. The comforter came to tell you all that. And now I'm telling you how to be saved now. You see it? Wherefore, hear the word of I am, you scornful men that rule this people, which is in Jerusalem. See, hard hearted ass niggas. Because you have said, we have made a covenant with death, the carnal mind. See, the carnal mind is death. Check it and see, and then come back and then I'll continue. The carnal mind is death. You saw it? Okay, coming back. You have made a covenant with death, so the carnal mind. And with hell are we at agreement. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, here it is, guys. So when the flood come through, they think they will be safe because they have done what? Made an agreement with the carnal mind. You see that there, little flock of laters? And with hell are we at agreement. You see it? And when the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us. For we have made lies our safe spot, refuge. And under falsehood have we hid ourselves. They've hidden themselves under things that is no profit. The grandson is telling you how to actually hide yourself in the father's name. They will not do that. They're scornful. They're going to hide in some other physical bullshit. They're going to hide in washing their hands to the elbow. They're going to hide in keeping the seventh day. They're going to hide in so-called keeping the Sabbath. They're going to hide in so-called eating clean diets. They're going to hide in so-called wearing fringes. They're going to hide in so-called keeping the Ten Commandments. They're going to hide every fucking where. Except the truth, which is the father's name is where you hide. It's always been. It's not about what you do. You can't do nothing to save yourself other than rest in him. That's all you can do. Continuing. Therefore, saith I am power. Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone. You hear that? So after they've made this agreement with hell and death and everything and hid and lies, Abba turns right around and says, I lay in Zion a foundation stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make what? Swing! I'm not playing. Shall not make what? Haste. What did I tell you the bear means? To be slow. Not hasty. So if you believe on the foundation God has laid, you will not make haste. That's going to prove it. You're going to be resting, chilling, keeping the word of his patience, doing the work he told you to do. That's what you'll be doing when trouble hits while everybody else think they can save themselves. That's the problem. That's what always happens when people are pussies and get a, get scared when trouble come. They run. What the fuck you running for if this shit can't even harm you? You're proving you believe it can harm you by moving when it comes. You don't have to move. It ain't going to harm you. It ain't going to come nigh to my dwelling. Watch. Grandson, you ain't got no faith in God. You ain't even doing nothing. Me not doing anything is the proof that I have faith in what he's done. That's the doing that I'm doing. And you think it's not easy to do it. I mean, you think it's so easy to do what I'm doing. Then how come you don't do it? Oh, shit. Is it because you don't believe? They entered not in for their unbelief. So don't fuck around with the branch because I'll bunk your stupid ass. Did you guys see that about making haste? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, where were we? Um, okay, verse 17. Watch this. Judgment also will I lay to the line and righteousness to the plummet and the hell shall sweep away the refuge of lies. So when the storm comes through, it's going to sweep away the safe spot that they were hiding in. See? The refuge of lies. Lies, a refuge of lies is a safe place you have made outside of the body, which is I am. If you go outside of there, you'll die. And God told me don't leave the house. So that means stay inside the house of I am. And don't leave it. That's simple. If you do, you'll die. You see? You'll be overcome by the flood and you'll be overtaken by it. And you will seek to fight for yourself, but you'll be blind while you're fighting and you'll die doing that. You see it? Watch this. He said, a flood is coming. It will overflow. You see that? And the water shall overflow the hiding place. So if they're hiding somewhere, the water will even go in there. Hmm. And your covenant with death, your covenant with the carnal mind shall be disannulled. And your agreement with hell shall not stand. So will it stand? Nope. So why even run there for safety? Because you don't understand the truth. You don't know it or don't care to try it because you're faithless. That's simple. Watch this. Then he called it a rock of offense and a stumbling stone. That same stone he was talking about that's precious and a foundation stone. He also called it a rock of offense and a stumbling stone, didn't he? Yeah, because people don't believe it. See? Continuing. When the overflow, oh, excuse me, and your covenant with death shall be disannulled and your agreement with hell shall not stand. When, when, when the overflowing scourge shall pass through, then you shall be trodden down by it. So when the wolves come running from the left side down through the forest, they're going to trample and tear and rend up every damn thing that was hidden and not founded on the solid rock. Isn't that true? Yahushua warned you all of this. Did you heed his warning when he said, build your house on a solid rock? Abba told you what the solid rock is. From the time that it goeth forth, it shall take you. For morning by morning shall it pass over, by day and by night, and it shall be a vexation only to understand the report. See that little flock of letters? For the bed is shorter than that a man can stretch himself on it, and the covering is narrower than he can wrap himself in it. You don't have no physical thing that can save you in that day. Just a fancy way of saying it to you. For I am shall rise up as in Mount Perizim, and he shall be wroth as in the valley of Gibeon, that he may do his work. What work? His strange work. And bring to pass his act. His what? His strange act. So his work and his act is very strange. It's not what men think it will be like. That damn simple. So they don't think the remedy is what it is because they don't think this flood is what it is. The flood is inside. It's the feelings that you feel. That's what water represents. It's the feelings you feel when you behold something that causes fear to come up in you. That's the storm that's going to well up and make you start to seek to save your life by thinking of a way out. Instead of not thinking, but resting in thought. Watch this. Now, therefore, watch this. Now, therefore, be ye not mockers. So during this flood, there are going to be some mockers there. Did you remember the children that the brother said he saw in his dream? Especially the bully with the big stick that he was holding there. And tried to hit him with the stick and everything. Those are called mockers. Correct? Abba says, don't be mockers. Remember when he said, don't boast yourselves against the original branches? So when you go into the forest, don't look at all those broken branches and say, ha, 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 look at all these weak ass niggas. They couldn't hang on to the tree. Weak ass branches. Y'all don't even know how to hang on to your tree you was planted into. Damn, look at these fucking whole ass branches every damn where. That's boasting yourself. I'll never break off. I was, they were broke off so that I could be placed here in its place and become mightier than them. That's boasting. 
All that is boasting, 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 and boasting. And it ain't going to do nothing but cause you to be broke off and cast to the flame. Isn't that what he said? You'll be broke off too? Yeah, because it's pride. So he's telling you that you have to be humble to remain on the tree like the grandson keeps warning you guys. What do you think these warnings are going out for? Because it's coming. That's why. Because it's upon you. That's why. And he wants you to know, just like he did in Noah's day. Therefore, be ye not mockers. Keep that in mind, the mockers, because we're going to see this in another example about some bears. Mockers, lest your bands be made strong. You'll be even more entrapped. For I have heard from I am the power of armies, a consumption even determined upon the whole earth. So this flood is going to go over the whole entire earth. You see it, little flock of leaders? But it started where? In Israel. Told you. All right. All right. We want to go to Second Kings. Go to Second Kings chapter 2. Now we need to get a little bit of a mystery unveiled here. This scourge and this flood, when does it occur? Well, it occurs when somebody is taken up, when the son of man is taken up, when he's caught up. That's when the overflowing scourge come. And that's when you ain't supposed to be no mocker and you're supposed to stay humble and everything. And that what happened with Noah. Noah went into the ark. He was sealed inside of the ark. And then the water came down and lifted the ark up. And when it lifted it up, they all perished and were taken away. Correct. So now we're going to see if this happens another point so we can connect it like Legos, like we like to do. All right. Let's see. Remember, the son of man is going up. That's when a flood comes. He goes up. The flood come down. Second Kings chapter two. Let's start at verse eight. And Elijah Eliyah, which means I am power. That's what that means. I am power. Took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters and they were divided hither and thither so that they too, they too is Elijah and Elisha. Elisha means I am salvation. So I am God and I am salvation are together here. And they too went over on dry ground. I wonder what water they're at. What have I told you guys about? You have to come down the Jordan River and go down to the lowest point, which is the Dead Sea. Humble, quiet, dead. Is that not the same thing that we're discovering here through this message? You have to go into that same state. Now, let's see if that's where these two men are at, walking across on dry shot. Let's actually see if that's where they're at, the Jordan, which is what we kept talking about, what that means, Yardin, which means to descend. Let's see. And it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. What did you what do you want from me before I be taken away from thee? Taken away. So what did I tell you guys? That's what happens before the flood come down. I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. And you got that spirit on you. I want a double portion of that shit you got. That's what I want. And he said, so Elijah said, thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee, but if not, it shall not be so. So in other words, if you see me go up, then you will receive what you've asked for. But if you don't see me go up, then you won't receive what you've asked for. Simple enough. And it came to pass as they still went on and talked that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind unto heaven. And Elisha saw it. Bam! He saw it. So is he going to get the double portion? Well, let's see, little flock. 
And Elisha saw it and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and ripped them in two pieces. He took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him. And he went back and stood by the bank of what? Jordan. Like I've told you before. If you don't believe me, go back some messages and you'll see me talking about Yarden and what does it mean about going there and why do these two have to go down there and go into that river like John the Baptist and Yahusha did as well? Because one had to decrease so that the other could increase. So we see that same thing with Elijah. He had to go away so that the one who to come after could come. So then Yahusha said the same thing when he said, I must go away for if I go not away, he who cometh after me cannot come. Didn't he say that? Who was the one that comes after the true vine? The branch, all cap, capital letters. He can't come until Yahushua finishes the work because the branch is going to hold the world accountable to the finished work of Christ. Are you doing what Christ told you to do? If Christ didn't come do his work, I can't come to ask you, have you done it? But he did do it. So now I'm holding you accountable to what he said. See how it's all going. And what he said is what will save you. Keep the word of his patience. If you don't, you won't be. Now you think I'm not the branch telling you that mystery? Revealing it the way that I am through this while also interpreting a dream? <laughs> Guys, come on now. I, my uh, other brother, speaking of dream, I just got an email from another brother across the ocean. He emailed me and, and the name of the email was, it was all a dream. Do you guys see this here today or what? And he told me he had a dream about me that I was coming into a new place, going into a new environment that was all sunny and bright and beautiful and warm and everything. That's what he said. Can y'all hear this today or what? So there, they stood, he stood on the bank of the Jordan. So what river were they at? The Jordan River, like I told you. That low place to descend, to become humble, and then you'll be exalted. So Elisha followed Elijah everywhere he went. Elijah even told Elisha, stop following me. And Elisha said, wherever you go, I go. That's simple. I'm not going anywhere unless you go. And if you go, I'm going. That's how this is going to work. And then he did. And then he followed him all the way till he saw him go up. So did John and Yahusha. The one in Yahusha's bosom. The one I keep telling you guys about. He also was there at the cross when nobody else was. Where were the other brothers at? When John was at the foot of the cross. So in other words, Yahushua, where you go, I go. That's why I say he love him. That's why I say he in his bosom. Follow the lamb where the so ever he goes. John and those who are with John. It's just the way that it is, little flock. John means Abba's grace. So it's a cold word for the branch. The branch is stuck in the bosom of the tree, the tree trunk. It's stuck in the bosom of it. That's why he says he was in the bosom of the one in whom he loved. Uh, interesting, interesting, ain't it? All right. So they were at the river Jordan and he took the mantle of Elijah that fell, that fell from him and smote the waters and said, where is I am the power of Elijah? And when he had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither and Elisha went over. And when the sons of the prophets, which were to view at Jericho, saw him, so there were sons of the prophets watching at Jericho. When they saw him, they said, the spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. Look at that. Then it came and fell on Elisha now. And they came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him. Humble. Humility. Do you guys see it? And they said unto him, behold, now there be with thy servants 50 strong men. Let them go, we pray thee, and seek thy master, lest peradventure the spirit of I am have taken him up and cast upon him some mountain or into some valley. And he said, ye shall not send. And when they urged him till he was ashamed, he said, send. They sent therefore 50 men and they sought three days, but found not. They were sending men to see if maybe they could find Elijah somewhere. Elisha was like, you ain't going to find him. Ain't no need in sending no men. But they did it anyway. And they still didn't find him like he said they would. You see? 
And when they came again to him, for he tarried at Jericho, he said unto them, Did I not say unto you, Go not? See, didn't I tell y'all not to go? It was a waste of time. And the men of the city said unto Elisha, Behold, I pray thee, the situation of this city is pleasant, as my Lord seeth, but the water is not, and the ground is barren. And he said, Bring me a new cruise, and put salt therein. And they brought it to him. And when he went forth unto the spring of the waters, and cast the salt in there, and said, Thus saith I am, I have healed these waters. There shall not be from thence any more death or barren land. What is he using? He's using the word, you see, to quicken and to cleanse and to heal. So the waters were healed unto this day, according to the saying of Elisha, which he spake. See? And he went, now that's life. Now let's see if he can also cause death to occur. Let's see. And he went up from thence unto Bethel. And as he was going up by the way, there came forth little children out of the city and mocked him. Do you see the dream? Do you see the dream? Do you see it? The kids are all mocking and everything. Ah, yeah, got branches and sticks, throwing them around and every damn thing. I told you, pay attention to that. He said, don't be mocking. Well, they are. What will happen if you do? Let's see. The children, the little children, came out and mocked him and said unto him, Go up, thou bald head. Go up, thou bald head. Go up. I told you he's in a very low state, way down there, descended. See? Go up, go up. And they mocked him. And he turned back and looked at them, looked on them, and cursed them in the name of I am. And there came forth two she bears out of the wood and tear forty and two children of them. Two bears came out of the wood. Same thing like the dream. So the bears represent what, little flock? Being slow to speak. They weren't. So what happened to them? The bears heard them talking and ate them up. I told you, you gotta be quiet. But if you're prideful and puffed up, like they were saying, go up, go up. While they're all puff, puffed up and everything, they couldn't help but talk. And when they talked and opened their mouth with haste, what happened? They got gobbled up by the bears. So you see, I ain't jacking around or playing about anything that I'm saying to you about what things represent. Am I? All right, he did. All righty then. Go to Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 1. Watch this here, little flock. Woe to the rebellious children, says I am, that do what? That take counsel. What should I do when danger comes? You got to prep. You got to get your water. You got to get your corn and everything. You got to get this and get that and get your bunker built all up and everything and put your cement in the walls and put your code on your safe and build an underground bunker way down on 5,000 meters under the ground and everything. You have to set your nest amongst the stars and fly out to Mars and go live up there if you got to to escape the shit that's coming on this earth. Woe to them. That take counsel, but not of me, I am. You didn't ask me. And that cover with a covering. So y'all try to protect yourself like we read in the other place. You see, they try to make refuge. I mean, they lies, lies their refuge. You see, covering. But not of my spirit. See that? You cover with the covering, but it's not of my spirit that they may add sin to sin. Error to more error. That walk. To go down to Egypt. Egypt represents physical 3D world of material. So they buy materials. What did the children of Israel do during the famine when Joseph was living? They went down to Egypt to buy corn. See, they trusted in Egypt for their sustenance. But this time, Abba won't do it with a sign. He's going to do it with his spirit. Like he said, y'all are not asking counsel from. So his spirit is going to deliver the children of Israel because he's the rainbow man to save just like Joseph was. But he's not going to save with physical corn and physical water and all that shit because the famine isn't of that. 
The famine is y'all didn't hear the truth concerning what to do. That's the famine. So I'm an oasis. I am the light of the world, shining the light, saying, this is what you must do to be saved. Can't you see it today? But they trust in Egypt and have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Therefore, shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame. All that shit y'all run to is going to bring shame to you. And the trust in the shadow of Egypt, your confusion. You're going to be confused as to how it didn't help you when trouble come. See it? For the princes were at Zon, and his ambassadors came to Haines, and they were all ashamed of a people that could not profit them, nor be a help, nor profit. Vain, like I said earlier, but a shame and a reproach. The burden of the beasts of the south into the land of trouble and anguish, from whence come the young and old lion, the viper, the fiery flying serpent, they will carry their riches upon the shoulders of young asses and the treasures upon the bunches of camels to a people that shall not profit them. For the Egyptians shall help in vain. I told you. So people that have worldly power, in other words, America or anybody else, UK, uh, China, Russia, I don't give a damn. Any worldly nation. You see that? Will help in vain. And to no purpose. It ain't even no purpose in them even trying to help. Therefore have I cried concern. Watch, little flock, and listen good. I told you, if you want to be saved, you will listen to this. This part specifically. Therefore, this is why, since y'all are running to things that will not help you, I'm going to tell you to listen to this. Therefore have I cried concerning this. Cried with a loud voice concerning this. What? Their strength is to sit still. Stop. Is it what the grandson is telling you to do or not? If you run around looking to save your life with stupid shit from Egypt, you won't be able to do it. If you think you're going to save your life because of how something looked or how the situation looked, then you're not going to have it. You're going to be confused to how that didn't save you. Because only one thing can save, and it's the name of the Father. I come in my, I am come in my Father's name. Their strength is to sit still. What's their strength? What's your strength, little flock? Say it so I know you heard me. Your blood won't be on my hands. What's your power? What's your strength? Now go, write it before them in a table and note it in a book that it may be for the time to come forever and ever. Write it forever that that's their strength. It don't never change. So has it changed today? No. That this is a rebellious people. This people is rebellious as hell, though. Lying children, children that will not hear the law of I am. They won't even hear it. Which say to the seers, see not. And to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, grandson. Don't tell us the right way to be saved. Tell us smooth things and things wherein there is no prophet. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceit. Get out of the way. Turn aside out of the path. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. Wherefore, thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because you despise this word, see, what do the people hate? The word of his patience. When he did it, he said, this day you shall all be offended in me. When he demonstrated the word of his patience to us, as an example, he said, you would all be offended at me. But there was one man who was there, Yachanan, the one in his bosom whom he loved. He was there and he wasn't offended to look upon him on that cross. He was there right next to him. But all the rest were offended. Watch this. Watch this. Wherefore, saith the Holy One of Israel, because you despise this word and trust in oppression and perverseness and stay thereon, therefore this iniquity shall be to you, listen, as a breach, a crack or a break, ready to fall, swelling out in a high wall. 
whose breaking cometh suddenly at an instant. So the imagery he's using here is if you have built up a big ass wall in front of you to protect you from what's on the other side. And when the thing from the other side comes and starts to beat upon that wall, you feel safe at first. You're like, ha, 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 ha. Son of a bitches ain't getting through my gate. I tell you that right now. We spent 50 fucking years building this thing, making it 100 feet thick. And then while he's talking all that shit, big ass crack starts coming through that brick. It's all right. We're good, guys. Don't worry about it. Just a little defect there on the wall. Some more bricks come falling out. It starts to swell. It starts to poke out like a water balloon about to explode. You know that shit going to break through at an instant and come flooding through there fast as hell without you having any chance of an escape. Correct, little flock or not? That's what's going on here. Swelling out in a high wall whose breaking cometh suddenly at an instant. Before you know it, boom, there it is. 14. And he shall break it as the breaking of the potter's vessel that is broken in pieces. He shall not spare so that there shall not be found in the bursting of it a shirt to take fire from the hearth or to take water withal out of a pit. It's going to be so shattered it won't be none left. For thus saith I am power, the Holy One of Israel. In returning, listen, thus saith the power of I am. What is he saying? Returning and rest, in returning and rest shall you be saved. What else does he say? In quietness, stop. In what? And y'all may be saying, grandson, why are you doing that? Why are you acting so exasperated in everything? I'm not. I'm emphasizing it because you have not heard it. You do not know it. And if you didn't know it, you wouldn't act the way you act. What did he say? In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. What did he say earlier? Sit still is their strength to stand still, to be quiet, to be in confidence. Do you see how it's stacking up that same state of being? The grandson started this message telling you that this was about and has always told you in other messages that this is what Abba wants from us at this time to learn how to do this and to practice it because when the heat is on, you're going to be saved by doing that and that alone. Confidence shall be your strength. Same thing he said. But what happened when the people heard that? And you would not. You wouldn't. You would not. All day long, I extend my hands, but you would not. Look at the same words. But what did they say? But you said no. I don't want to stand still and be quiet and sit there confidently. I'm offended. That's the point. People are offended at that, so they don't do it. Well, you'll die. Watch this. No, for we will flee upon horses. Therefore shall you flee. And when we ride upon this, and we will ride upon the swift. See, haste. We're going to get out of here fast. We're getting the fuck out of here, but that trouble hits us. Therefore shall they pursue you. Be swift. Like I said. If you leave the house, they will chase you and they will be faster than you and they will chase you down and you will fight them, but you will lose because you're blind and can't see. <clears throat> one thousand shall flee at the rebuke of one and at the rebuke of five shall you flee till you be left as a beacon upon the top of a mountain and as a what? An ensign on a hill. And till you be left to an inside on a hill, one remaining soldier with a flag. That's what the branch is. That's what the branch is. One remaining soldier with a flag. Read your Bible to tell you. And therefore will I am wait that he may be what? Yahanan. Hanan is gracious. Hanan. Yahana. Ya is I am. Hanan is gracious. I am gracious. That is the name of the man who is in Yahushua's bosom. He is the foreshadowing of the branch, branch, which is God's grace, sent to the people as one last flag in the earth saying, hey, listen. Listen to what Yahushua has told you. That's the only way you'll be saved. I'm offering you guys rest. 
like Noah was. Noah was one man left at the end to do that. He was perfect in his generations. All right. For the people shall dwell in Zion at Jerusalem. They shall no more weep. And he will be very gracious unto thee at the voice of thy cry. When he shall hear it, he will answer thee. And though I am give you the bread of adversity, like I said earlier, the tears and cup of tears and everything. See, he give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction. See, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore. But thine eye shall see thy teachers. See? And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee saying, this is the way. Walk ye in it. When you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left, you shall not defile also the covering, excuse me, you shall defile also the covering of thy graven images of silver, ornaments of gold, and thou shalt cast them away as a menstruous cloth. In other words, things where you were trusting in to save you, you will cast that shit away, like the Bible says, when you find the pearl of great price, like I described earlier in this message. You throw everything else away. Thou shalt say it unto thee, get thee hence. Get this crap away from me. It doesn't do any good. Stones, get them away from me. Necklaces, get them away from me. Tarot cards, get that shit away from me. Seances and bullshit, get that shit away from me. Grimoires and books and all this other crazy shit of spells, get that bullshit away from me. It's unprofitable and stupid as fuck once you got the truth. That's how you're going to feel. He just said it. Then, so when you get like that, then he'll give the rain of thy seed that thou shalt sow the ground with all and bread and the increase of the earth and it shall be fat and plenteous in that day shall thy cattle feed in large pasture. See how everything's changing? Because you kept the word. See? All right. All right. Watch this. Let's go to 27. No, no, let's go back to 26, where we was at. Moreover, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun, and the light of the sun shall be sevenfold, and as the light of seven days in the day that the Lord bindeth up the breach of his people and healeth the stroke of their wound. See, behold, the name of I am cometh from far, burning with his anger, and the burden thereof is heavy. His lips are full of indignation, and his tongue as a devouring fire. Fire. And his breath as an overflowing stream shall reach to the midst of the neck to sift the nations, sift the nations with the sieve, which is what you sift with, of vanity. Told you. Told you. And there shall be a bridle in the jaws of the people causing them to err. <clears throat> Oh boy, y'all hear it? You shall have a song as in the night when the when a holy solemnity is kept and gladness of heart as when one goeth with a pipe to come into the mountain of I am to the mighty one, blah, blah, blah. Okay, we got what we wanted from that. Okay? Now, he's already told us what this power is. What did he say what our strength is? To stand still, to be quiet, to be confident in it, to sit back and chill and relax and don't make haste. But if you don't believe that, then you'll make haste. Right, little flock? Now we're going to get an example of that. Second Chronicles chapter 20. Start at verse 11. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 11. Behold, I say how they reward us to come to cast us out of thy possession, which thou has given us to inherit. So some people is coming to kick Israel out of the land and kill them and destroy them, right? So then what should they do according to what Abba has told them to do? I haven't even read the rest. I'm just going to ask you, according to what we have already studied and uncovered here and revealed, what should they be doing when this trouble comes that he just said is coming? What will they do? Will they fight? Will they get their arms and get their their their, their uh, swords and everything, strapping it on, bows and shit, arrows sharpened and everything, go running out to battle? Is that what they're going to do? No, nope, let's see. O oh, our power, will thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company. What did I tell you about the bear? When he comes to wrestle with you, do you have any might to wrestle that nigga away from you and get him up off you and put that nigga in a suplex and rock bottom that nigga and come down with a people's elbow and knock that nigga out and pin him? I don't think that's going to happen, dude. The nigga going to bear hug your ass, throw you down to the ground, 
take his claws, rake them across the back of your skull and tell you there's no skin left on your shit. And you're looking like the night of the living damn dead with your clothes and skin and ripped ass body tore up to shreds because you tried to wrestle with something that was um, you had no might against. For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. Your eyes are upon the bear? Is your eyes upon the company of the army that you're looking at? Our eyes are upon thee. I am is where my eyes are. See it there, little flock. Now let's see. And all Judah stood before. We know he's the Israelites. All Judah. Let's see if it's their power and if their power works when they do it. Let's see. And all Judah stood before I am with their little ones, their wives and their children. So everybody was doing it. And what did they do? Then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the spirit of I am. So the spirit came upon this man while they were all worried and needing to be saved. So when the people need to be saved, Abba's spirit will come upon a chosen vessel to tell them the way to be saved. Correct? Correct? Is it happening? Am I doing it? Well, then it's correct. But let's continue and let's make sure. So the spirit came upon Jehaziel and he said, so who's speaking now? I am is speaking. Hearken ye all Judah. Listen to me, Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem and you, King Jehoshaphat, even you listen to me. Thus saith I am unto you. This is what the Most High says to you. Be not afraid. Stop. So when you saw the bear, you got scared naturally. But when you looked at Abba and said, I'm not going to look at the bear. I'm looking at you. What do you used to tell me to do to not be afraid? What did the man say that he was feeling in his dream? I wasn't afraid. <clears throat> be not afraid. Nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, by reason of this big stinking ass bear. Don't be afraid for the battle is not yours. But I am. Tomorrow, go down against them. Behold, they can they come up by the cliff of Ziz, and you shall find them at the end of the brook, before the wilderness of Jeruel. Verse seventeen. What does it say? You shall not need to fight in this battle with this big stinking ass bear. You don't need to fight him. Set yourselves. Stand ye still. And see the salvation of I am with you. Um, Guys, did you hear it? So it happens to be the same thing he said will be your strength. He's telling them right then. He came into that man so that he could tell his people, don't be afraid. Don't be scared. Not one little bit. Don't worry. You ain't even going to have to fight the nigga. You're scared of a big ass bear. You don't even have to fight. But he's coming. He ain't going to get me. Did the man in the dream have to fight that bear and that boar? Did he have to? Did it do him any good to? Even though he wrestled all damn day long. Did it do him any good? And what did he say at the end? I had this feeling that I wasn't even trying to, the things weren't even trying to do me any harm. Maybe it was even trying to protect me. It was trying to protect you, as we just discovered here through this interpretation. Haven't we, little flock? You shall not need to fight. Stand still. See the salvation. Oh, Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for I am will be with you. Okay, I am will be with you. Jump forward to verse 24. And when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude, and behold, they were dead bodies fallen to the earth. Stop. So that big ass army that was coming to destroy them, that was causing them distress. When they prayed to I am, I am said, don't worry, I'm going to fight him. You ain't going to have to do a doggone thing. 
And when they went to go look to see what Abba had done, they saw what he had did. And what he had did was made them niggas what? D-E-A-D. Skeetly Dilly D. So then, what do you guys want me to tell you will happen when the army comes to kill you? What do you think I should say? What would I be telling you all? Isn't it so easy and obvious you don't have a choice when you talk to me? The reason you don't have a choice is because I don't give myself a choice. That's why you're not talking to an actor or a fucking hypocrite. I don't give myself a choice but to do what he told me to do. So then I hold my brothers and sisters to that same standard. Because that is the standard. Every word that he told you, you must keep in your heart and do it. And if you do it, even when it's offensive to do, you shall prevail. Let's continue there. There were dead bodies falling to the earth. Now, how many of them niggas escaped? None escaped. And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil of them, they found among them in abundance, both riches with the dead bodies and precious jewels, which they stripped off. Y'all hear this shit? There were three days gathering all of this jewelry and gold and money and every damn thing. Y'all hear that shit? So God just brought them to a place to bless them with a whole bunch of wealth and money. But they thought God was bringing them there somewhere to die. They always thinking that bullshit because they don't judge the way God judges. That's why. But what did God say is your strength and your power, guys? It's clear and evident. It is clear and evident. Go to Psalm 46. Psalm 46, let's go to verse 10. Let's see what we find here. Psalm 46, be still and know that I am power. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. I am of armies is with us. Didn't that, that what he said in Chronicles we just read? The power of of Jacob is our refuge. I am is our refuge. Lies is their refuge. See, I am is the refuge. It's the ark. It's the tent. It's the tabernacle. It's the temple. Are you in there? Because if you're not, you will not keep the word of his patience when trouble come. You won't know to. And you'll die because of the famine of the word and the hearing of his words. You'll die because of that because you didn't hear and you didn't know what to do. You listen to men tell you what to do. Do this to please God. Do that to please God. Are they saying stand still and see God save you? Is that what they're telling you to do? Because isn't that what we're reading? And it wasn't God indignant because the people weren't trusting that. So, so it is today then, isn't it? Because I'm just pounding you over the head with examples of what happens when they're told to do it. They prevail, don't they? And they didn't even have to wrestle the bear or the boar, did they? All right, then. Moses, oh, Exodus chapter 14. Verse 13, and Moses said unto the people, fear not, stand what? Fear not, stand what? It says, stand still, grandson. That's what it says there. How many times have we read that? Stand still. Numerous at this point. How many times have we read it? Once, twice, more than that. So then what do you think God's trying to tell you here? You won't think to stand still when it comes, but you should because it ain't coming to hurt you. It's coming to protect you. Mm, 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 mm. Moses said unto the people, fear not, stand still and see the salvation of I am, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. I am shall fight for you and you shall hold your what? Peace. I'm not going to play around anymore with you guys. You really have to be a fucking dumbass to not understand this. You understand why I'm saying it like that? Isn't it obvious what I'm preaching here today? Or the dream that has been interpreted for you here today? Of which you shall do when trouble come, when the flood come on in? He told you what to do. Rest is your power. Stand still is your power. Quietness is your power. Confidence is your power. Seeing the salvation is your power. That's your power. If you do anything else, you're powerless. You guys understand that message today? 
I hope that you can receive it. And I hope that you guys take some doggy bags. There's a whole bunch of food on this table. Like I said, y'all, I wasn't even planning on breaking this into two messages, but Abba did because he knew it. He said, that's too much food to put all in one message, man. So they beat him, fell asleep, dozed off and everything trying to follow that message. <laughs> you better break it into two. And so it has been broken into two. Let me make sure I ain't got nothing else I want to get real quick before we end this message real flop. Mm. Let's go to Job real quick. Because I said that I would prove to you that this dream, I, I, I would ask you if this dream came from the father or if it just came from this guy's imagination. He just made this stuff up or something. Job 33, 15. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, in slumberings upon the bed, then he openeth the ears of men and sealeth their instruction that he may withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride from man. Bam! What did I say, guys? Abba wants to protect you when he deals with pride he's going to destroy. Bring you to humility down the River Jordan to a descending place called the Dead Sea where nothing lives there. Everything is dead. That's why it's called that. So you need to go down there and get humble so that the mantle can fall on you and then you can rise up and become powerful and walk back across that river and come back to man and tell man the same thing. Is that clear to be understood? The way. So that you can tell man the way to salvation. You see it? Which is the word. The word of his patience. So now, little flock, the storm is coming. The winds are about to rage. I've told you guys this before. It's about to become so tumultuous in such a tempest that men will be shaken and broken down to the ground. And the wolves will come through and trample them and run them up out of their hiding places where they thought they were safe. And we'll just sit there like uh, enclosed up under that boar that pins us down and that bear that keeps us quiet and causes us to act like we're dead. And when he walks on past. All of that to the little flock. Like I said, before I end it, let me make sure. Leave no stone unturned. Mm, yeah, I think that's it, little flock. Y'all be blessed today, little flock of laters. See the one, Miss Rylock.